Tony Grafton from Princeton University, former president of the AHA. I think books have a future in history in two ways. One is that we are simply a book-based discipline. We believe in developing an argument at substantial length, founding it on a massive research in original sources, discussing the other people who've intervened in the secondary literature, and in the end, that's a discipline which finds the book rather than the article to be its natural mode of expression. And I don't see us abandoning this in the immediate future as a genre. As for physical books, um, there, I think it's really hard to know what's actually going to happen. We're producing more of them pretty much every year than we did the year before. Go to the book display at the AHA, and there are one heck of a lot of history books in the old traditional sense being produced. My guess for years has been that this production is going to move on to, into digital platforms, and that those digital platforms will allow us to do some things differently if we can get rights to include some of the original evidence, whether that's textual or documentary or visual, to give live links to secondary literature. There should be a lot of possibilities, but I think the basic point, which for me is not whether something is on paper in between covers, but about scale and depth and power, I think that that, that continues to have a future, and indeed, I think digital media are what make me most confident that there's a future. I have two minds about whether we need books. On the one hand, there is some evidence in perceptual psychology, Nicholas Carr and others have made this available to less uh, specialized readers, that we read on screen differently than we read on paper. That it, when you read on paper, you take away a more permanent memory of what you're reading. It's really engraved on the tablets of your mind, as we would have said in the Renaissance, in a way that simply doesn't happen when you read on screen. You're reading with a different part of the brain, uh, the problem solving rather than the memory part of the brain. And that's a worry. But on the other hand, I believe we're very adaptable monkeys. And I always think about epic. Homer wrote epics in the 8th century BCE which Virgil, the great Latin epic poet, read 700 odd years later in scrolls. And Virgil read them so well and committed them so well to memory that when he wrote his own epic, he was constantly alluding to and playing with both the whole structure of Homer's Iliad and Odyssey and individual parts. Um, uh, we scroll down 400 years, St. Augustine reads Virgil's Aeneid in a codex, a bound book, the kind we still use now, and he reads Virgil the way Virgil read Homer in a completely different medium. When he writes his confessions, it's a Virgilian account. He reads Virgil and says, wow, story of my life, and he knows his Virgil the way Virgil knew his Homer, and writes, and writes using him, though for different ends, in the same way. I think in the end, we will adapt. I, I have great faith that our, we will find ways of reading in whatever it is we have to read. It's like the old story of the rabbi who says, God told me there's about to be a flood, so we have 24 hours to learn how to read or live underwater. I think the, thing, the main thing I would tell younger scholars is to get real skills, to have a, an independent knowledge base about digital media, uh, to know how to do some programming, to know something about the innards of the devices and the software that they're using. I think this is now no longer an option. This is something that you really have to do. And I think mastering that will make people give people access to ranges of data they wouldn't otherwise have, enable them to solve problems they wouldn't otherwise be able to solve. The main point is this. I think at the moment there's still a tendency in many digital projects to use big digital media to answer questions that you could answer in older and more conventional ways, maybe not as satisfactorily. What I really think we need are people like um, a recent Princeton PhD, Ben Schmidt, who's now teaching at Northeastern, who have statistical and quantitative training and who ask their questions in a way that only digital media can answer. So I think that's really what I see as, as the lesson to take away. I think anybody who's going to be making a career in the humanities in the next 50 years needs to know a lot more than, say, I do, about, uh, and not just about digital artifacts and their uses, but about the way they're constructed, and above all, about the forms of thinking that let us question the intelligence.